Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Thank you, God, today for the Holy Ghost. Continue to move Holy Spirit and anoint and touch and set the captive free in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the fact, after the fact, everybody say that. The devil is your enemy, but he's always moving after the fact. You see, he is not God. He's a fallen angel. He was a crowning prince who was created by God. He was covered with beautiful stones and tapestries. And uh, some think he led praise and worship in heaven. I don't know. But I know that of all that God created, he was the most beautiful in order and when pride came in his heart, he lifted up himself. And seven times in Isaiah, he said, I will. I will be like the Most High. I will overthrow the throne of God. I will exalt myself to the sides of the north. And he caused war to break out in heaven. He and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven. And so Satan is not God. He's not the Holy Spirit. He is just a fallen angel of the highest order. And as a result, he is not an original he is not an originator. He doesn't cause things to come into being. The Bible says that he does three things in his modus operandi. He kills, robs, and destroys. He is a pathological liar. He is a killer, a serial killer, and he's a destroyer. That's all he knows how to do. He's filled with hatred for God and everything that's attached to God, which includes his creation, Everything on this earth, the devil not only hates us, he hates this earth. He wants to destroy the earth. He, he, but he certainly hates us because we are the crowning glory of God's creation. And so because of that, Satan is no originator. He is one who comes in after God has already done his thing. And when God does his thing, he does it with his word. And so when God speaks His Word and creates or causes something to happen, or sometimes God speaks a Word and then He doesn't bring it to pass, He backs up from His Word, and on our side, He sees if we'll believe it and stand by it. And on Satan's side, He says to Satan, go ahead and chip away, do what you can. My Word is a strong tower. My Word is a rock in a weary land. My Word created the heavens of the earth. I live by my Word. In fact, I exalt my Word above my name. So, Lucifer, you think you can do something to make one jot or tittle of the Word pass away? Go ahead. Just do your best. Just get out there and exhaust yourself and pound your head on the rock of the Word. But Satan, that's what he does. He is a... He is not an originator, but he is one who copycats. He comes in behind everything that God says and everything that God does. He always wants to be God. He wanted to overthrow God. He, he wants to be God so bad. And it's funny because in order to complete the deception of the last days, the Lord is going to allow Lucifer to do things he's never allowed him to do before. We're getting ready to usher in not Christ, but Antichrist. And when Antichrist comes in, he's going to be the embodiment of what Jesus was on the positive. Antichrist will be everything for Satan. And Jesus had not only himself, but he had the Holy Spirit. So when God lets Lucifer have his heyday to complete the deception of the world because people have rejected Christ, then he's going to say, okay, Antichrist, you want your Holy Spirit? We'll call him the false prophet. And the false prophet will do for Antichrist exactly what the Holy Spirit did for Jesus. He will exalt and lift up the man, Antichrist. Lucifer's always been jealous. He always comes in a shade late and a dollar short. He comes in the morning after. You know, Paul said he never would have crucified Jesus if he knew what God had up his sleeve to raise him on the third day. And the worst lie the devil ever told was that somebody stole the body. But he was in a pinch. He didn't have much time. 
That was the best lie he could come up with overnight. And so he said, somebody stole the body. Sure enough, somebody stole the body. That was the worst lie the devil ever told. But he got caught by surprise on that one. And so, you know, he, he, he's always come in after the fact. And with Baal, he tried to call down with 490 prophets, fire out of heaven, and, and, and it, he couldn't do it. But when Antichrist comes, they're going to call down fire out of heaven. False prophet will call down fire out of heaven. And he'll give a beast or a created thing life, and it will speak to the masses, and the masses will wonder after the beast. And then, you know, the greatest miracle Jesus did was be killed and raised on the third day. And Lucifer's always one. He's a copycat. He's always wanted to do that. But, but he never could, you know, because he, after all, he's not God. But to complete the deception of the world who has rejected Christ and accepted Antichrist, God is going to let Antichrist even have a death and resurrection. And it says Antichrist will receive a deadly wound to his head and will be raised from the dead. And the whole world will wonder after the beast. The whole world will say, this is a God. Look at the deadly wound that he received. What are you preaching at today, preacher? I'm trying to tell you that the devil comes in after the fact. And when he is no originator, he's a copycat killer. He comes in and does the best that he can, but he comes in behind everything God says. Notice that when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he could have put a fence around the Garden of Eden so Lucifer couldn't get into it. I personally wish that he had of. He could have put an electric fence around that, and every time a snake tried to get in, it sting us. Oh, no, I can't get in there and get at them. But God had something far better in mind. God had something far more wonderful, and that is for man to be tempted and because of love to choose him. For man to be seduced by the best. You know, when God puts you in a test, He doesn't put you in a small test. He, get, he lets the best hit at you. Lucifer is the brightest, the best. He has tremendous power, seduction. All kinds of, of, of the world is His oyster. His kingdom is the world. And He has does what He wants to with it. And so when, when Satan comes in and tempts you, you're being tempted by the best. And, and here we find that he comes into the garden and he says to Eve, Oh, how are you today? Did God say that you can't eat of every tree of the garden? That is perversion and lies. She engages him in dialogue and says, No, we can just only not eat of one tree of the garden. And then he outright lies and says, that is not true. God knows the day that you eat of it, you will not die. You will become a God. And all of these other religions and all these other man-made stuff, whether they're worshiping crystals or they're sitting cross-legged doing the mantras saying, be still and know that you are God. All they're doing is trying to Enact and believe the lie that Lucifer gave to Eve. You will be a God. Man wants to be a God. He wants to be a God. Unfortunately, death gets in the way. Old age happens. And the God looks kind of puny and pitiful after a while. <laughs> That's why they make God's that have eyes that can't see and ears that can't hear and hands that can't move and put them up in temples so at least the God looks presentable. Because if he was alive, he would look terrible in about 60 years. But we find that Satan comes in after the fact and he says to Eve, the battle line is drawn, Eve, and it's over what God said. And every battle that every person here today is facing is over one thing. It's over what God said. You're, you're, you're struggling because you're struggling over what God said. God gave you a word. God gave you a promise. God said something. And the devil comes in on the backside of it. And he tries to do the best he can to negate God's word. To make it a lie. To create circumstances that contradict it. To make it look like it could never happen. It could never come to pass. It could never work. 
But God said. What do you have to go on? God said. That's all I got. God said. But look at this. Look at that. Look at their opinion. Look at these circumstances. Look at this trouble. Look at this. Everything contradicts it. Yeah, but God said. So the tension in my life is always between what God said and what I'm going through. What God said and what my neighbors and my family think. What God said and what my five senses tell me. <coughs> Somebody say amen. What God said, the soul that sinneth it will surely die. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you live after the flesh, you will die. But if through the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. That's the word. But what does the devil do? Comes in and says, yeah, but they're doing it. Yeah, but you got a family member. They're doing it. Oh, but look, it's acceptable here. Oh, look, we'll change the word. My brother was in uh, Phoenix last week, and he visited a pastor friend of his who is in a, a nice part of Phoenix. It's called Carefree, Arizona. It's where the wealthy and ritzy people live, and he built a big, beautiful facility out there. And he has a big, beautiful church he's had for years. And, and he was telling my brother, he said, I'm so upset. He said, my youth pastor, and he said, I have several hundred in my youth group. And he said, but my youth pastor recently was preaching to the youth group and told them that Jesus was not born of a virgin. There was no such thing as virgin birth. And he said, I called him in and said, did you teach the youth, teach the youth group that Jesus was not born of a virgin? He said, yes, I did. He said, I don't believe it anymore. He said, I've heard so many things contradictory. And he said, listen, we have to lay down some of these fictitious parts of the Bible in order for us to all come together. All religions, all of us have to come together. My brother's friend said to this youth pastor, there's only one thing left for you to do. Get you an empty box, go to your office, and pack your stuff. You're gone. You're out of here. Our Ravi, Ravi Zacharias, uh, who is a defender of the faith, an apologist, uh, talking that recently he was in this huge conference, this church conference, and he was sitting on the platform waiting to speak, and one of the world's largest churches, uh, he said one of the mega church pastors was sitting beside him. And he said this pastor began to engage him in dialogue because he knew what Ravi was going to teach on. And he said, you know what? I don't believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. I don't believe this is God's Word, that it's all true. I think there's er parts of it that are wrong. I think there's parts we don't have to live, parts we don't have to believe. And I no longer believe in the inerrancy of the Scripture. And he said, I don't know what the big deal is about making a big deal out of it anymore. He said, because you can see that the world's religions are trying to come together. And we have to come together. They're even talking about having conferences where they have them what they call Chrislam conferences. Combining Christianity and Islam together. Chrislam, they call it. And everything is being watered down and compromised so we don't believe what this is anymore. It's no longer the standard. It's no longer the truth. It's no longer the rock in a weary land. It's no longer divinely given. Oh, it was just written by 40 men and it doesn't make any difference. Listen, that is a lie. That's the Antichrist spirit that's have come into the land and it's not pervading the cults. It's already got the cults. It's pervading the American church and the churches have pulled away from the rock of the word of God but listen to this preacher I want to tell you something today if God said it it is divine if God said it it'll never pass away if God said it heaven and earth might go away but his words will never pass away and you better believe that one day when you die you're going to stand before a holy God with no defense attorney and you're going to give an account for every part of that word God going to use his word his word is a lamp unto my feet his word is a light unto my pathway if God spoke something to you he'll let hell ice over six foot deep before he breaks his word it's forever established in heaven thy word is truth David declared Paul said we have a sure word of prophecy let the devil do what he wants but stand on the word believe the word 
Read the word. Hide it in your heart. Meditate on the word. It has never failed anyone who has taken it to their heart. It will hold you up at the midnight hour. It will guide you through the darkest night. It will stand by your side when you're in a hospital room. It will take you from here to heaven. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I was reading in Genesis at the creation account. Genesis 1-3, and God said, <laughs> Let there be light, and there was light. Verse 6, God said, Let there be firmament, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And what happened? The waters divided from the waters. Verse 9, And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit after its kind. Verse 14, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let there be for signs and seasons, days and years. And it was so. Verse 20, And God said, Let the waters abound with abundance of living creatures, and let the birds fly above in the firmament across the heaven. And it was so. Verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to its kind cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth. And it was so. Each kind according to its kind. Verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish, the sea, the birds, the air, the cattle, and over all the earth. And it was so. You're standing on a planet that got here because your God said, Let it come to pass. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Hebrews 11.3 says, For the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Why? Because the worlds were framed by the Word of God. The things which are seen were not made by the things which are visible. That's why we've got 30,000 research chemists and biologists that are looking, trying to find God, the creator, the, the, the reason that we all got here. And they'll never find it under a scope, under a lab, under a test tube. Why? It's not there. Hebrews 11.3 says, the things which appear were not made, but the, the things that are made are not made by those which appear. In other words, the things that you can see do not tell you who made them. The things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. But they declare who made them. David said the constellations and the stars scream out and say, God did this and He's great. God spoke us into existence and we've been standing here for all these years. Somebody say amen. amen. When Job thought he was bigger than God, God said, Job, if you're so big, if you're so smart, if you know so much, where were you when I put Orion up there? The biggest constellation. We see it every night. He said, I put it up there. He said, throw a lasso on one of those constellations and pull it out of the heavens. And then I'll declare that you're God. Job, if you can't even handle a crocodile, he said, go over and try to pet one. He said, put your hand out there on him. He said, you'll never forget your encounter. He said, try to take one home and make a pet out of him. Put a rope on him. Let your little daughter play with the croc. See how long you last. He'll eat it for lunch. He said, if you can't even handle a croc, 
How can you handle me? My word. God's word is right. God's word is true. And don't you let the devil come in and start questioning God's word. Not only the written word, but the word that God has put over your life. I would say every person in this church has been a part of this church for any amount of time because we're a praying church and we teach you the disciplines of hearing from God. Most of you, if not all of you, have heard a word from the Lord. How many can lift your hands and say, I've heard a word?